call it what you want, the universe, luck, right place, right time, or magic. I call it believing in yourself. Istanbul 2005, 25th of May, every Liverpool fan's dream got answered that day. 3-0 down at half time. We go on to win the game in dramatic fashion after scoring three in the second half and winning on penalties. That game changed my life and I wasn't even there. I was 12, sat crying in a pub with my family in Liverpool after the first 45 minutes, laying in the definition of a heartbreak, watching my team get destroyed, but praying for a miracle. I get asked all the time, you know, what's the defining time in my life? And when did I know I could go on to achieve the things that I've gone on to do? Write hit records, become Grammy nominated, present TV shows, play football, perform for thousands of people, and to be in the position I am in today. And the truth is, it was that game. That game helped me get here today without me even realising it, because that's the moment I believe the magic. The truth is, I guess we all need our own kind of magic um, to achieve the dreams that we want to achieve. This talk isn't about how to get where I've got to or to follow these steps to success because I'm just as clueless as you. I've literally winged the whole thing. But today is based on belief and having the ability to believe in yourself because I believe that 50% of self-belief is the key to success. Let's go back. When I was nine, it's when I started playing football. I grew up with no brothers or sisters. My mom actually went on to have my baby sister when she was 40 and I was 16. That was a bit of a shock, but a good one. You know, I used to spend a lot of time playing football, kicking a ball against the wall. And then one day, my granddad seen an article in the newspaper for an Ian Rush soccer school. I was the only girl. I didn't know who Ian Rush was, but everyone kept asking for a picture with this guy with a moustache, so I followed. And it turns out he was a pretty good player. <laughs> so um, I'm glad that I've got that going on the wall at some point. Anyway, you know, call it what you want. The universe, luck, right place, right time. But I got scouted for Liverpool that day. The summer camp was being held at the same place the Liverpool team trained, and someone spotted me. I went down the next week. You know, I didn't even own a pair of football boots, but I ended up signing for Liverpool under 10s and I remember it like it was yesterday. Walking into the training pitch and seeing a sea of girls all my age, I finally felt like I belonged. And you know, I wasn't strange for being a girl who played football. Fast forward, I'm 16. I choose to leave school, not continue education. It wasn't really for me. You know, I worked hard in school, but I preferred going home, playing football, writing music, playing piano. And that's where I felt like my energy was best spent and it made me feel good inside. School never m made me really feel good. Um, you know, I'm gonna talk about listening to yourself more in the talk, but that was the first time I made the decision to listen to myself when I left school. I had no money. I played gigs on the weekend. I played for like 50 quid an hour. And it was the first time I started in and from something I love to do. I started getting a bit of name for myself in the city and more and more people had start coming to gigs. Um, you know, the next thing that happened was another one of them moments. Call it what you want. You know, the universe, luck, right place, right time. But I was put forward from a teammate at Liverpool at the time, Shanice Williams, shout out to you, our left back. And it was a competition, which if you won, would end up in your six months mentorship and studio time with a Liverpool footballer, Ryan Babble. Looking back, I'm not sure what reason I'll wait the other. The chance to meet a Liverpool player or getting six months free studio time. But anyway, I went on to win. I believe it was my destiny looking back. Who else could have won? It was a perfect fit in my story and the stars, they aligned. You know, after that, Ryan went on to leave Liverpool and we kind of lost contact. But having spent that time learning the ropes, I knew what a backing vocal was. I knew what a synth pad was. It set me up for the next phase in my career. And that next phase was my first record deal. You know, I signed, I was 18, 19. I signed a four album, four album deal. I can't even say it, it's crazy. Um, but for more money than I'd ever seen, I thought I'd made it. But this was the key part in everything. This talk is about believing in the universe and also believing in yourself. But this was the part in my own story where I stopped believing in myself and started to believe in other people. And that was a huge lesson. I started getting told what to wear, how to look, I should dance, what my piano was gonna look like, how my album was gonna sound, and I hated it. You know, I spent a year making an album, making music I disliked, and I was put in a room with producers 
who are big hits or sold loads of records, but I hated everything about it. I look back now and it's funny because that was my first heartbreak the day I got dropped. I remember like it was yesterday. It was two days before Christmas. I cried for the whole holiday, <laughs> but it was like looking back at an ex and thinking, what the hell was I doing? It wasn't right, but it was a huge learning curve for me personally. And from then on, I never relied or listened to anyone if it didn't feel right for me. Now I listen to me gut in everything. You know, if it goes wrong, well, it's okay, but I done it. I can't blame anyone else but me. And I learned a valuable lesson and a huge blessing. I heard Daryl Stinton say in his TED talk, I learned to use rejection as projection. And that's what I done. A detour happened then, you know, I started writing songs. So I got dropped, boo hoo. Nobody wanted to sign me or even take a meeting with me. I was 21 at this point and I'd spent the remainder of my advance and I was down to my last few pounds. <laughs> my mum said if I didn't get another offer in before the end of the year, I'd have to go and get a proper job. This was around October, so I didn't have long. And about a week before the deadline, I got a call from my manager. He'd scheduled a meeting with a publisher called Peter McCamley, and he was one of the best in the business. He had signed people like Craig David, the Spice Girls, Ina Rolston, Jamie Scott. So I got on the train to London, and can you believe it? The train broke down. It was delayed an hour. I remember running into the meeting, out of breath. I looked awful and his first words were like, you're really late, I've, I've got to go, I've got another meeting. And I was like, okay, well, that's the universe. You know, it's telling me this isn't for me. I'm gonna to have to start looking for other jobs. Um, I think he asked me two questions, something like, what do you think's your best song? And why do you want to be a songwriter? The truth is, I didn't want to be a songwriter. <laughs> I wanted to be my own artist, but this was the only option I had at the time. And I listened to me gut, you know, he left, I cried on the phone to my manager, told him about the train story, um, and the next day my manager called me and said Pete offered me a deal. It was a small deal, but you know, it was the only one I had on the table, so I took it with both hands. It meant I could stay in music a little bit longer. I sat down, spoke to Peter once we signed the deal, and I made it clear I was only wanting to write so I could eventually go on to release my own music. He's a big Liverpool fan, so he used the great analogy of being like a youth club player on the subs bench or a new sign, and I had to wait me turn. You know, get the respect from the producers and the writers again in the industry, because, you know, I had a chance and it didn't work out, which I understood reluctantly. Anyway, um, my first ever session was, uh, you know, in Copenhagen, and it was for Carly Minogue. I went on to write Million Miles, and it ended up being track two on a number one album in so many countries, and I thought, Amazing, this is easy. <laughs> but you know, the funniest thing is I didn't feel jealous at all that my name wasn't, you know, on the radio being mentioned. I was happy that I could now say I was a songwriter. And it's always funny looking back on how I become a songwriter because I really didn't intend to be. But you know, it happened, I believed, I didn't give up. And I took what I had in front of me and it helped me go on. You know, fast forward another year. By now I've wrote loads of songs for a few people. And all the record labels started knocking it, you know, knocking on the door again. I was, I was hot. And it's crazy because I ended up signing back to the original label that dropped me, Sony RCA, for, you know, a lot more money. Um, kind of like Paul Pog for signing back to Man United. I was a bit smug, you know. Um, but I remember really believing in the universe at this point because I was like, come on, what are the chances? 18, 19 year old me crying at Christmas. And here I was walking back into the first building that broke my heart, on fire, in demand. It felt good. You know, I released a few songs, which I loved the next time round, because I was in control. Since then, I've gone on to sign to Tap, who managed Dua Lipa, Lana Del Rey, Ellie Goulden, me mate from Soccer Aid, Dermot Kennedy. Uh, I've signed a sad project with Ultra Records under Universal, under the name of Vice Versa. And we're currently writing for the next single. That's with two of my best friends. I love that. So then we go into TV. I mean, before music was back into a safe spot. This is also where football began to creep back in for me and do a whole 360. Um, when I was in between deals, I had a bit more time on my hands. I just watched the 2015 Women's World Cup in Canada. Majority of the England team were all my old teammates from Liverpool, Everton, Tramia. And I miss football, so I thought, all right, you know, I'll do a bit of Sunday League. But after a day of sending out the resume, I had trials for West Ham, Tottenham, Fulham, 
and a few more and they all offer me a contract and that's again where belief self belief started kicking in you know I signed for Tottenham spent a season there before dropping down to play for Fulham where I was allowed more time to do music TV all this kind of stuff um, you know I'd go to the studio and an artist would ask how did you get on at the weekend and then when I'd be playing football all my mates would be like you know what who are you writing for this week and I, I had an idea about a TV show so I was I called my mate Amy Meveld she's at the BBC she started because she wanted to do a small piece on my life in music and football she thought it was pretty cool so I called her with this idea I just had a feeling again a gut feeling that it could work so she commissioned three episodes and it ran on football focus they were no longer than three minutes but it was amazing you know I got to take me music mates to football matches and it just worked um that then led on to me becoming a host for the women's world cup in june july 2019 in france which is just incredible um you know then i got the match of the day x job again crazy a bbc show on prime time and at the time i remember my record label hated it they'd say things like well you can't do all these things people won't know what you are are you a singer are you a footballer are you a tv presenter and i just reply why can't i be them all you know having a career in so many things might make it harder for me to be a huge success in one field but i believed i could go on and do all of them you know i've sold millions of records as a songwriter i've signed many record deals many football contracts made successful tv shows podcast shows radio shows and i'm hungry for more in life you're going to find people who try and put you in a box and will try to make you pick one thing but you don't have to you can do anything that you want to do and I hope I can be an example of just that you know I don't think I'm gifted or special I don't think I you know have any of those things but I have a good sensibility of believing in myself I believe self-belief and never giving up literally is 50% of success now when I'm in a bar and someone tries to chat me up and they ask you know what I do for a living they wish they never asked I'm like I'm a singer I'm a songwriter footballer tv presenter podcast host radio host take your pick um but this talk was never about how to get where I've got to like I said or a step-by-step -step guide to success um you know like I said it's just call it what you want the universe look right place right time all magic but for me personally, to get where I've got to, it's been all about self-belief. I hope I've inspired a few years. Um, good luck with your journey and thank you so much for having me.